maintain over time. So after two years, Florida's, Florida's retained third graders outperform their socially promoted peers by about two thirds of a school year. And since 2006, when the first retained third graders entered sixth grade, middle school FCAT reading scores have improved substantially and the percentage of 6th, 7th, and 8th graders scoring below basic has fallen to 16%, the lowest level ever. Right now, we are um, in Minnesota, here in Minneapolis, we are about, uh, eight, uh, our, of our 8th graders, about 40% of them are scoring uh, below basic. So a significant difference um, between Florida and here in Minneapolis. And when you look at um, the composition uh, the student composition in terms of at-risk factors, uh, we're pretty comparable in the, in the, in the urban area. Uh, outstate, not so much, but in the urban area, our populations are, are certainly comparable. Okay, and probably even more significantly, since 2003, the number of Florida third graders who score low enough on the FCAT to be retained has fallen by 41%. So that tells us that w the instruction that's happening in K through three has changed dramatically in order to reduce that percentage by that much. So they are, the way they approach reading is very different today than it was 12 years ago. And why do you think that that's happened? There's a major reason for that. It's the same reason for reading change to take place in a school. It takes really, really strong leadership. In this case, to change the course of an entire state, um, it was the governor. And put all your politics aside in terms of Republican or Democrat, but the governor who was in charge of that change uh, was Jeb Bush, and he now runs a, not runs, but he has a, a, a literacy nonprofit that is doing some really continues to do some really good work. So the foundation was laid by him. He, he basically came in, saw what the reading scores were, and said we, we need to make dramatic changes and put in this, this program of change, of which third grade retention was a big piece of it, but another piece that really uh, got the union fired up was that every school, they were given schools you could, it, it, schools were given three years to implement change. After three years, schools were going to be graded A through F on the reading results of their kids. And those results were, were published. And, and parents then could, you know, it, what it did was fire the parents up to get some grassroots uh, movement for change as well. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, I, I, that's a good question. I'm, I, I don't know. I, I, but I'd, I'd be surprised if they were much smaller because I think their, their cost per student in terms of what the, s the state's paying for tuition is about the same. I'm just wondering about the teacher's mental health as far as, you know, how that impacts the teacher. That's a lot of struggling students. And what yeah, again, it's not fair to teachers. Um, if you, you don't empower them with the professional development and the tools that they need. And unfortunately, I, if you've heard me um, give reading talks before, I think to no fault of teachers, I think they're really inadequately prepared to teach reading. Not enough uh, reading coursework in, in, co in colleges of education, not nearly enough in most. Um, if, if you want to get your primary uh, elementary license, you generally only have to take one overview reading course, which is not nearly enough uh, background to teach reading. Uh, reading is a really complex uh, process. It ha you have to really understand language and, uh, and the structure of language to teach reading, and, uh, and, and teachers just simply don't. We, we run uh, teacher training programs here through the year, and we always do a, uh, a post-course evaluation. 
and about 95% of people who fill out that ev evaluation, their teachers who have teaching licenses, um, exclaim, why, why weren't we given this information in our undergraduate programs? That, there's been some policy change uh, that's taken place over the last couple years um, at the Board of Teaching, where now there's new standards that teachers have to, new teachers have to meet in order to uh, receive their licenses. And they also, we passed a literacy bill at about the same time the policy change was made. Um, teachers, in order to get their license, have to take a comprehensive uh, knowledge-based assessment of reading in order to, they have to pass it uh, with a high cut score uh, in order to receive their license. And that's great um, to have that foundational knowledge that you need, but if they're going into schools where uh, that knowledge doesn't exist and you're relying on curriculum instead of making informed decisions as a teacher, it's going to be very hard for new, young new teachers coming out of these programs to change the way uh, literacy is addressed in school. So I don't hold out a lot of hope that the things are going to change right away. So the fact, uh, finally here, the fact that thousands of at-risk kids now learn to read without the need for retention is the retention policy's most important and lasting fruit, I think. So the central lesson of Florida's success is this. When schools are held accountable on their students' performance in reading, when they have a deadline for proficiency with accountability and oversight, they will succeed in preparing children to read by fourth grade. So what can we learn in Minnesota from this? You know, I think we need to uh, create a comprehensive plan to improve K through 12 reading. And I'm going to put something out uh, that I think will dramatically improve K through 3 reading. Uh, but this comprehensive plan should focus on ensuring that all elementary students receive scientifically based reading instruction and should also focus on identifying, assessing, and remediating struggling readers starting in kindergarten. If Minnesota could implement a new literacy framework, third grade retention would not be needed. And that's a strong belief that I hold. So I don't, I think if I were to go back in that telephone call of asking me to testify for retention was made today, I think I would tell the senator, let's look at this instead. We need to hold districts, schools, administrators, and teachers accountable for students reading or lack of progress. Uh, and students should be, I think students, uh, schools should be given grades, just like kids are, A through F for the reading performance of its students, providing that teachers are given the tools that they need. And I would say providing that this literacy framework that I'll introduce in a minute uh, is used and used with fidelity. We should take advantage of the capabilities of our data system to link struggling re readers with our high performing teachers. And we should also expand access to and support for the Minnesota Reading Corps, which is a highly effective literacy program for children ages three through third grade. Right now, um, Minnesota Reading Corps is in every single Minneapolis school, uh, thanks to the Target Foundations. I don't know if uh, you folks are aware of the money that Target has put into literacy in Minneapolis, some $6 million, I think, over the next three years, but whereas maybe 15 to 20 percent of Minneapolis schools had Minnesota Reading Corps, which is a, a group of um, volunteers, they're not volunteers, they're given small stipends and trained to go into schools to give very specific remediation um, to K through third graders. And the remediation is, is, is basically phonics, okay? And they're now in at least one reading core volunteer is in every single school in Minneapolis. And they're highly effective. They're getting really good results in intervening with kids. And I'll show you how they intervene in a minute. Okay, so we need to improve our students' reading scores. We need a, a laser-like focus on reading that begins in kindergarten. Children at risk of struggling to read need to be identified, assessed for individual needs, and provided with intense support as early as possible. 
And this is the, the, a new literacy framework that I, I propose. It starts with having quality core instruction. And we'll talk about what that means in a minute. It also includes data-based decision making. No more uh, gut feels about where students belong in terms of a, of a curriculum or in a reading group. We need to make data-based decisions. We need to use something called a response to intervention model. And I'm going to go through all of these in a second. We need to focus on high quality professional development for teachers. And we need to give teachers time for professional collaboration. 